Hey guys, today we're going to have a look at the magical Canon RF 85mm f1.2 LUSM, and I say magical for a reason. This beautiful piece of glass has helped me achieve some of the most beautiful portraits I've ever taken, and today we're going to talk about it. I'll let you know what it can and can't do, and who should buy it. And with that, let's have a look at the aperture and focal length first. As you can tell from the name, this lens has a fixed focal length of 85mm, and the aperture opens up to a maximum of f1.2. In terms of focal length, there are pros and cons to it being fixed. Obviously a variable focal length makes a lens more versatile, but a fixed one produces sharper images. Also, since this lens is intended for portraits, 85mm is all you need, as it is considered to be the most flattering focal length. Different lenses will distort the image in different ways, and 85mm is generally agreed upon to be the best for portraits. This, by the way, assumes you're using an 85mm lens on a full-frame camera. If used on a Canon crop sensor, an 85mm lens would be equivalent to 136mm. If you want to achieve the 85mm look on your Canon crop sensor camera, you'll want to grab the Canon 50mm lens, as that would be the equivalent of 80mm, which is close to 85mm. The way that I'm arriving at these numbers is by multiplying the focal length of the lens by 1.6, which is what you have to do for Canon. When talking about aperture, f1.2 is super wide open. This lens will allow a huge amount of light in, thus allowing you to take noise-free images in low-light conditions. If manually focusing, getting a sharp eye on your subject will be a bit of a challenge, but the Canon R5 autofocus is so amazing that I'll get the eye almost every single time. Just like its cousin, the Canon RF 15-35mm f2.8 L ISUSM, this lens feels really pro. It's rare that I actually hold something this well built in my hands. It feels like it's not only a beautiful piece of engineering, but that the people who made it actually care about quality. This is of course, a really expensive lens from Canon, so even though that is to be expected, it is still an impressive lens to hold. As you can see, the lens itself is thick, and much like its cousin, it looks comically large on the Canon R5 body. As if that wasn't enough, you also get a massive lens hood with it. The lens measures 4.62 inches in length, just over 4 inches in diameter, and weighs about 2.63 pounds, or just under 1.2 kilos. As a result, it will take up quite a bit of space in your bag, so when carrying it around, if you want to use the lens hood, it might be a good idea to invert it, in order to save space. Now, let's talk about image quality, both in terms of photos and videos, starting with photography first. As you might guess, this lens produces absolutely stunning portraits, which is specifically what it's designed for. The wide aperture also allows you to get more out of golden hour, as f1.2 allows so much light in that you'll find yourself shooting near sundown, while still keeping noise at bay. Allow me to show you some of the photos I've captured with the Canon RF 85mm. Now that we've covered photos, let's talk about video. Given the absence of image stabilization in the lens, it's obviously not necessarily designed for handheld videography. As you can see from this B-roll of the Canon RF 15-35mm f2.8 L ISUSM, things can get a bit shaky. The built-in stabilization on the Canon R5 absolutely helps with that, but there are limitations. You can obviously get some beautiful footage with this lens if the camera is on a tripod, and assuming you can get far back enough. If you're filming an interview, for example, if you want to get your subject's head and chest in frame, 
you probably have to be a good 9 feet away from them. That will also make shooting handheld b-roll difficult, as most of the b-roll I shoot involves holding the camera in my right hand and filming the product in my left hand. Due to the 85mm focal length, getting my entire hand in frame would be nearly impossible, which is why I use the 15-35mm lens for that. By the way, if you're finding this video to be helpful, don't forget to leave a like, as it'll help with the algorithm, and other people will be able to find this video as well. And now, back to the video. Like its 15-35mm cousin, the RF 85mm lens has the usual autofocus slash manual focus buttons on the side of it, and of course a special control ring, which we'll get to in a second. In fact, on the body of the lens you will find two different rings, one for finding focus, and one programmable click control ring. Using the camera menu, you can program it to do different things like change shutter speed, autofocus mode, etc. Unfortunately, from what I can tell, Almost everyone disables it, as the positioning is a bit awkward and you can accidentally touch it with your hand, thus accidentally changing settings in the middle of a shoot. It's a great idea from Canon to implement this ring, but in reality it's not super useful. If you personally use it, let me know down below how you've configured yours. In terms of durability, given that it's a lens, you're going to want to be careful with it. The more advanced and impressive technology gets, the more fragile it tends to be, so taking care of your lens will ensure that you'll be able to use it for years and years. The first thing I did when I purchased it, just like with its cousin, is I bought a Sigma 82mm ceramic filter for it to protect it, link down below. The idea behind the filter is that if I accidentally bump it on a hard corner, or if something hits it, the cheaper filter can take the hit thus protecting the very expensive glass element found underneath. Given the astronomical cost of this lens, I'm more than happy to spend a little bit more on a quality filter so that I can sleep easier at night. Upon purchasing the lens, you also get the comically large hood I mentioned earlier and a soft carrying pouch. The hood would indeed help with accidental bumps, but once you take it out of the carrying pouch, I'm not sure what the use for the pouch itself is. If you have the kind of money that allows you to purchase this lens, you probably have a professional camera backpack for it. As a quick side note, much like the 15-35mm lens, the front and rear glass on the lens is protected by fluorine, which is a smudge-resistant coating that repels moisture and grease. That is fantastic for the rear lens, but I keep my filter on anyway. When it comes to weather sealing, the lens is protected from dust and splashes. That's fantastic to know, especially if it starts to get a bit rainy during a shoot. So, in conclusion, should you purchase the Canon RF 85mm f1.2 LUSM? If you want to do portraits or headshots, this is a fantastic flattering lens. If you want to film interviews or make the kind of videos that allow you to have the camera on a tripod, this would work well, assuming you have enough room to back away from your subject. Really, you could use this lens for basically any type of photography, though bear in mind that portraits is what it's designed for. If you want to film B-roll though, I'd have a look at its cousin, the Canon RF 15-35mm f2.8 LIS USM, which I've reviewed on this channel. You can find the link down below, or just click the card in the top right corner. If you're looking for a cheaper RF equivalent of this lens, I actually have a review of one coming soon, so make sure to subscribe in order not to miss that. Alternatively, if you're looking for a similar EF version of this lens, have a look at my Canon 50mm f1.4 lens review. Again, link down below or in the top right corner. Do you have any questions? Feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to get back to you. If you'd like to purchase any of the items I've mentioned in this video, or see how much they cost in your country, I have a link down below where you can view them. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe and hit that bell, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. <laughs>